And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to the Dice Tower. Today we're taking a look at an expansion for Sleeping Gods called Dungeons. This is kind of a plug and play expansion. In fact, you can tell by the box here, everything's meant to be emptied out and put in the original game. And this adds an optional thing that you can do, which is go through dungeons that are scattered throughout the world of Sleeping Gods. Let's take a look. So the, uh, again, this just adds six different dungeons. We have the Crypt of Thorns, the Desert Grotto, the Blood Ruins, Caldera Fortress, the Coral Temple, and the Fish Bone Vault. There is a rule book that comes with this, and in the rule book it tells you the location of each of these dungeons. It's not a secret. In fact, it tells you you can just mark them on a the map, so that's what I would do. So I have this map here, and all these circled spots are where the dungeons are located. You can see they're kind of spread out around the world, and when you're at one of those spots, instead of when you're here, instead of reading 92, you can go to a specific dungeon. So when you go to a dungeon, the rules for the games change a little bit. So let's say you're here in Coral Temple. At this point, you're not playing the rest of the campaign. You kind of pause to go into here. And you're going to be using this lantern token as your party token. You'll start where there's a star. And then on a player's turn, instead of normal, you're going to have three actions. An action can be move. It can be explore, so you'll read the numbers here and different things will happen. Sometimes you can't move through different areas because of various things. But what this game is going to do is it's going to give you, you're going to use tokens from the original game that will kind of act as modifiers. It will say, okay, if token C's on the board, this will happen. That's just a way for the game to remember. And there will be keys that you'll be able to place in different spots to say, I can now get through that door. You can leave the dungeon when you want, as long as you're on the star area. And you can come back in another time, you just write down kind of the different things that happened. So when you come back, you know that the dungeon's where it's at. Here's the thing though, you're probably going to want to go through the dungeon and it's gonna to be tough. So you have three actions, move or explore, or you can camp. When you camp, a couple things happen. You're going to turn over the top card here and follow what it says on the card of these special cards, but you're also going to discard one of your event cards, ignoring everything on it. So that's kind of showing the passage of time as you're in here. Now these cards are going to do various things. I'm just going to show you one here. Marco's a fun guy, gives you some purple mushrooms, gives you a vegetable, you draw a fake card, see what happens. You get three to four use command, and then you get that same amount of command. And then you can build a fire if you have some to get rid of fatigue, etc. And that's kind of what these are. They're not always good. They're not horrible. But, you know, various effects are going to happen to you. Why do you want to go in a dungeon? Well, there's a whole new set of adventure cards here. With, that's the rest of this rule book. The rule book starts with just the rules, very short. And the rest is stories that are specifically for these, uh, for the dungeons itself. In these adventure cards, I mean, I think it's not much of a surprise to know that there will be totems found in these dungeons, as well as other really cool cards. But you also will get these tokens. There's various tokens that you can find here. Like, for example, I can find red tea, which removes too low morale. Or a bomb, which does two damage. Or an antidote, which removes two venom. Or a lucky bones, which lets me redraw fate. Or a potion. This will help you when you go through the dungeon, but you can actually keep these tokens for outside of the dungeon, later using them on. They're one-time use things, but they can come in handy. You know, having a, a bomb to do two damage is a nice one-time use item to find. And that's pretty much it. That's the dungeons. You're not gonna go through too many of them on any specific campaign, just because going through a dungeon, you could rest or pause three, four, five times. That's a lot of cards to go through. And then of course you have to get to the dungeon itself. Not a lot to talk about component-wise because you've seen everything. Everything fits in the main box easily because you literally just have a book, 
these three double-sided dungeon maps, which, by the way, I like the way the maps look. They're very simple, very easy to get around. Uh, and then a bunch of tokens. That's it. And then the extra cards just fit with everything else. The stories in this one are okay. They're not as exciting, I think, uh, as interesting as the main storyline, but they work fine, and they give you kind of a nice, they feel like a side thing that you're doing as you play the game. Dungeons is a fun sub division, I think, of the game. I like this expansion, and if you like Sleeping Gods, you may want to get this. But I want to be really clear, you don't need this at all. It does it add anything tremendously different. It adds more content, and more content's good. In fact, I really like the Tides of Ruin expansion for Sleeping Gods, which adds a lot of content. This does not add as much content. It adds six dungeons, and once you've gone through a dungeon, uh, you're likely going, I mean, I, I went through a dungeon, looked at every nook and cranny. I've, I've, I've played through two of them, but then I went through and looked at it, looked at every nook and cranny. You pretty much fully explore a dungeon when you go through it. And if you don't, you're likely missing something. And if you, don't, if you feel like you got something awesome, you're probably not missing anything. So they're fun, they're interesting. So there's six different ones and they're scattered throughout the world in different spots and it gives more stuff. I especially like the tokens. Those are nice to have outside in a battle. And it's an easy one to do. And in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Dungeons 2 show up someday with six more dungeons scattered throughout the world of Sleeping Gods. It's an easy plug and play. It's also kind of a way that I might, if the events are getting pretty tough and we're near a dungeon, like, let's go inside. We don't have to worry about our ship being capsized or all sorts of things. So there is that, and there's totems involved, so you have a reason to go to the dungeons because you are hunting down the totems and sleeping gods. This isn't for everybody. I know that if you got the Kickstarter version of Sleeping Gods, this came included with the game. But if you're just playing Sleeping Gods straight up and you're wondering if you should get this, if you want more content, yes. Don't feel like it's necessary, but it is fun and something different to do. I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. Dice Tower Judgment approved.